My name is Steve Koster. I enjoy taking whatever I have and making it work. If I was stranded on a desert island and given a spoon to survive with, I would have a three-story home built in a matter of six months. This is a 1986 truck. It's also where you'll harvest your steel from in this first round of competition. We've already picked the blade for you guys to make, the fully functional friction folder. The friction folder is a blade where, whether the blade is opened or closed, friction maintains that blade's position. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your three hour starts now. I know the leaf springs are gonna be the main source of material. I've never made a friction folder before. Whoa, hot steel. I haven't even attempted it, but I have read about them and I've seen demonstrations on making them, so I have a pretty good idea what it's gonna take. Steve's really moving that tang along. It's, it's starting to take shape. I decided to forge out a little pad on the end of the tang. The concept is to hollow out a little pocket where that tab would fit in the pocket, come down and stop the tang from going any farther into the handle. I'm telling you, I'm really impressed with the work that Steve's doing. I'm really trying to draw down as much material on the bevels to get the edge of the blade straight. Steve looks like he's going to go for a quench. I don't have any warps. I'm pretty happy with things the way they turned out. Three, two, one. Bladesmith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This first round of friction folder competition is over. All right, Steve, you may present your blade. This is the kind of work that we really appreciate from around one. What I see here, sir, is the design, not to fit the parameters, but overall function, putting that there. One of the biggest issues we've had from previous competitions is that this piece becomes a shank that seems to puncture everybody that holds onto it. You thought about that, and I truly appreciate it. Good job. Thank you very much. Bladesmiths, congratulations. You've made it into the second round of this competition, and now that your blades have been tempered, it's time to turn them into fully functional friction folders by attaching handles to them. Good luck, Bladesmiths. Your three hour starts now. I really need to concentrate on the handle. I'm a little confused right now at the geometry of the pinhole. I drilled three different holes in different spaces in my handle material and I can swing the blade and see where it closes and where it opens. I've got everything together and then I realized that I fully quenched my blade which means I have a fully hardened blade. And a fully hardened blade can be brittle and I really don't want my blade to be brittle for the bumper chop. I want it to have a soft back. So I blew back my spine. What Steve's doing is he's really building for the test. That blue backing was really a smart idea. The friction part of it works, opening and closing pretty good. Uh, just the handle is just too fat, so I really need to get it down a little bit. Five, four, three, two, one. Placement, shut down your machines, drop your tools. Woo! This second round of competition is over. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. To test the strength and durability of your friction folders, I'll be batoning them into this car bumper. Remember, this test is all about what that bumper does to your friction folders and not the other way around. What are you thinking, Steve? <laughs> I'm thinking I'm about ready to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking you are. Well, Steve, your edge took some roll from the bumper, mostly at the point here. Your handle is comfortable. I like the swell up here near the front. It's, it's, it gives me my hand a place to live. It all held up. It's all one piece. Well done. Thank you very much. This is the sharpness test. The seat belt strap slice. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what the edge of your weapon will do to these seat belt straps. All right, Steve, it's your turn. You ready? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You contour this enough to where I can wrap my hand around so I get a good grip. 
With that grip, it allows easier to index and slash with it. Your edge cut easily through all the seatbelt straps. It is sharp and it will cut. Thank you. Good job. John, Steve, congratulations. You've made it into the final round of this competition. Now we're seeing you back to your home for just to recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is... the Javanese Chris. Ah. Pretty excited to be doing the Javanese Chris. The Chris normally has a pretty coarse pattern to it. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna do a, a pattern welded blade. Right now I'm starting to forge the billet into a nice taper. Come on, baby. I need to spread this out a little more and then I'll start to uh, forge the curves into it. I ended up just forging them with a hammer over the horn on the anvil. And I really don't want to grind it to the blade. Yeah, I think forging it by hand is the way to go. The whole purpose of forging is to try to forge as close to shape as you can. It saves time later on when I go to the grinder, but I have to be careful to not bend it too much. The blade's been tempering overnight. Oh, baby, look at that. That's exactly what I was looking for. Now I just got to start on the handle. I'm choosing Koa because I'm kind of obsessed with it. It's just uh, unbelievable the way it looks. It turns my crank, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Before I do a final assembly, I'm going to keep sanding until I get it looking to where I want. Then all I have to do is a little bit of epoxy, pin it, boom, it's done. That's what it's going to look like. The blade is finished, the handle's on, but the Java Chris is very symbolic. It has little meanings hidden all over it. And what I need to do is set this in there with the hole. So I'm going to add six garnet stones around that collar, and they symbolize health. Yeah, I think it's happening. And the handle is a striped hardwood, and that is a symbol of a Javanese tiger I like. I already have the elephant trunk near the guard, and that provides strength for the blade. I hope it'll win. Steve, welcome back to the forge. Tell us about your blade. It's uh, all forged, 25 layers, uh, 1084, 15 and 20. I used koa wood on the handle to symbolize a Javanese tiger. I think it turned out pretty good. Your weapons will now be put through a series of three tests, a kill test, a sharpness test, and a strength test. Up first, the kill test. Doug? All right, bladesmiths, this is the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your quizzes and deliver slashes and thrusts on this big carcass. All right, Steve, it's your turn. You ready? Yep. Let's do this. Dude, that's impressive. All right, Steve, let's talk about your Chris here. The balance of this blade is really good. It's done in such a way to where I can really get speed in cutting. And because your angles of the edge over here is almost like an acute edge, it allows to cut deeply into this big carcass. It's light, it's fast, and it's sharp and it will kill. Thank you very much. Welcome to the strength test. To test the strength and durability as well as the overall construction of your Javanese Chris, I'm gonna be stabbing them in and out of these oil drums. Remember, this test is all about what these drums do to your swords and not what your swords do to these drums. Steve, you're up next, are you ready? Yep. All right. <laughs> Well, Steve, I love the shape and the design of your Chris. It's very classic. I don't see any damage, even though it's stabbed quite deeply into the drum, is still razor sharp. Well done. Thank you. It's time for the sharpness test. They'll be attacking these bags with stabs and slashes. And unlike the strength test, this is all about what your blades do to those targets. Steve, you're up. You ready? Yeah.
Way to go, buddy. <laughs> All right, Steve. Design-wise, your blade, I really like it. Your handle, I like that. I know that's not going anywhere. It's easy to index. As far as the cuts go, I think they speak for themselves. They're all clean, straight through. Really good job, Steve. Thank you very much. You bet. Appreciate it. Steve, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Great. Thank you. I won, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm glad it happened. You know, the cutting just tells the story. John did really a good job. I think my blade just cut a little better than his. My name's Steve Coster, and I am the winner of Forged and Fire.